JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year and welcome to JFD's first weekly market outlook webinar for the week January the 3rd until uh, January the 7th. I am uh, Haralambos uh, Bissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for uh, the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, job reports, CPIs, PMIs, and uh, OPEC kickstart the new year. But let's take things from the beginning and the day of Monday and the day of today. Today, the calendar is relatively light with markets in uh, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, and the UK, uh, the UK and Canada, excuse me, staying closed. The only data worth mentioning are the final uh, manufacturing PMIs for December from the Eurozone and the US. Although these numbers usually confirm their preliminary estimates, and indeed this is what is expected this time as well, we cannot rule out uh, small downside revisions due to um, the surging coronavirus cases around the globe in the last days of the month uh, after the, pre the, pre the preliminary estimates uh, were out. So, uh, although those are final prints, uh, be somewhat careful. Uh, we do have uh, more PMIs, manufacturing PMIs on Tuesday, like China's Kaijin Index for December, the UK's final market print, and the US ISM Index. The Chinese index is forecast to have ticked up to 50 from 49.9, while uh, similarly to Monday's data, the, EU, the UK market index is forecast to confirm its prelim, pre, preliminary estimate. The ISM, in, the ISM index is expected to have slid, slid somewhat. Uh, that's why uh, we, uh, that's another confirmation to, um, to, to be careful with regards to the final market prints uh, that we may get some, some downside revisions, but it remains to be seen. Now, Switzerland CPI is also coming out with the year-over-year -year rate expected to have ticked up to 1.6% year-over-year from 1.5%. However, the month-over-month -month, uh, rate is anticipated to have slid to minus 0.1 from uh, plus 0.3%. Therefore, with that in mind, but more importantly, taking into account uh, that the Swiss National Bank maintained the view that the Swiss franc remains highly valued, we... Uh, we, we don't expect an uptick uh, in, the, in inflation to raise speculation of a rate hike by this bank. We don't believe that officials will even be tempted uh, as uh, the franc has strengthened notably against the euro in the last uh, few months. So we don't believe that there will be any market reaction uh, to this uh, data set. Now, besides the economic data, we also have a meeting between major OPEC and non-OPEC oil producing nations. Despite the fast uh, surge in COVID cases lately, the group is not, um, is not expected to alter its existing policy as uh, most governments around the globe dismissed the chance of a full-scale lockdown due to the new variant being less deadly than the previous ones. Indeed, on Sunday, the group said that it expects the impact uh, on the oil market from the Omicron strain to be mild and temporary, keeping the door open for a further increase in output. Therefore, we expect the alliance to continue raising output targets by 400,000 barrels per day each month, as previously agreed. Oil prices could gain somewhat if indeed the group officially confirms the view that uh, demand will probably not be affected. The loony could gain as well, but 
its traders may also wait for Canada's employment data the other Friday before deciding on uh, bigger positions. Now on Wednesday, we have the final services and composite uh, market PMIs for December from the Eurozone and the US, which as uh, the manufacturing prints are expected to confirm their initial forecasts. The US ADP report for the month is also due to be released with a forecast suggesting that the private sector has gained 413,000 uh, jobs from uh, 534,000 in November. However, as we know that several times in the past, we prefer to refrain from using uh, this figure as a gauge for the NFP number, as uh, recent history has shown that it is not very reliable. Later in the day, we get the minutes from the latest FOMC meeting, when officials dropped the transitory wording with regards to inflation from uh, their uh, statement and uh, doubled the pace of, um, of uh, their quantitative easing tapering process, which means that conditional upon maintaining uh, that pace uh, for the months to come, the process will end in uh, March. Most importantly, though, the new dot plot pointed to three quarter point rate increases in 2022 and three more in 2023, at a time when the financial community was fully pricing in only two liftoffs uh, for this year. Now, given that this was one of the bigger meetings with a new dot plot and updated economic projections, we don't expect the minutes to reveal any new important information. We believe that dollar traders may stay more focused on the US employment report for December, which is scheduled to be released on uh, Friday. Now on Thursday, during the Asian session, China's Kaijin Services PMI for December is coming out, but no forecast is currently available, while later in the day, the final UK services and composite indices are forecast to confirm their preliminary estimates. Later in the day, we get the ISM non-manufacturing PMI for December, which is forecast to have declined to 66.8 from 69.1. Now, besides the PMIs, we also have Germany's preliminary inflation numbers for December. The CPI rate is forecast to have ticked down to 5.1% uh, year over year from 5.2%, and the HICP rate to have slid uh, to 56 from 6%. This could raise speculation uh, that Eurozone's headline CPI rate due out on Friday may, uh, may, slide, uh, may slide as well. Now, finally, on Friday, the main event on the agenda may be the U.S. employment report for December. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have accelerated to 400,000 from 210,000 in November, while the unemployment rate is forecast to have ticked down to 4.1% from 4.2%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have slowed to 4.1% year over year from 4.8%. Now, despite a potential slowdown in wage inflation, the rate remains well above 2%, and thus, with the other numbers pointing to further improvement in the labor market, we believe that the report will add credence to the case uh, for three rate increases by, by the Fed in 2022, and thereby support the US dollar. At the same time with the US employment report, we get uh, jobs data for December from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is forecast to have hit steady at 6%, but the employment change is expected to show that the economy added significantly less jobs than in November. Now, at its latest meeting, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates untouched at 0.25%. And in the statement accompanying the decision, the language was uh, more cautious than previously, with officials expressing concerns over the economic impact of the new coronavirus variant. That said, the Omicron uh, strain proved to be uh, proved to be milder than initially estimated, and thus traders are currently pricing in five quarter point rate increases by the Bank of Canada this year. Therefore, even if a potential slowdown in job in job growth uh, results in a pullback in the loonie, we expect it to be short lived. We believe that expectations over the Bank of Canada being the most aggressive major central bank in terms of tightening. Um, may continue to benefit the currency overall, at least for the next uh, few months. Now, ahead of those two employment reports, we get the dog CPIs for December from Japan and during the Asian session and Eurozone preliminary CPIs for the month later during the European trade. 
No forecast is available for the headline dog year rate, but the core one is expected to have ticked up to 0.4% year, year over year from 0.3%. Now, although this is a move in the desired direction, all Japan's main inflation metrics are well below the Bank of Japan's objective of 2%. And thus, we don't expect this bank to, ab to abandon its ultra loose monetary policy anytime uh, soon. We still believe that the yen will stay more subject to developments surrounding uh, the broader market sentiment rather than policy decisions uh, of the Bank of Japan. Now, flying to Eurozone, both the headline and core rates are expected, um, are expected to have uh, declined to 4.7 and 2.5 from 4.9 and 2.6 percent year over year, respectively. At its uh, latest meeting, the ECB decided to keep all three of its interest rates unchanged, and was, as was uh, widely anticipated, and announced that it will end the pandemic emergency purchase program in March. However, they decided to extend their investment horizon of the pet, or for the PEP and also to compensate by doubling the monthly pace of the asset purchase program uh, for the second quarter. Now, in our view, the outcome combined with uh, President Lagarde's view that uh, they are very unlikely to start raising interest rates in 2022 suggests that uh, the ECB remains very accommodative. So a slowdown in inflation could confirm that there is no rush in lifting interest rates and may bring the euro under renewed uh, selling interest. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 9 uh, a.m. GMT time. So goodbye, have a great day, and again, I wish you all Happy New Year. JFT, just fair and direct.